How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here with a copy of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, another copy of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, and another copy of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. And my question for you is, can you tell which one of these is the fake? Mmm, hard to tell. They look pretty similar, look pretty decent on top. The labels look kind of interesting. But I'm going to open up all three of these and show you what's inside. And each one of these cartridges holds a different secret inside of itself. It's pretty interesting, let's check it out. Before we get to these, make sure you're subscribed. I do about two videos a week, so there's always new videos on the way. I'm a huge fan of the retro, and uh, you never know what you're gonna find. Now, it's pretty interesting when you look at this up close, um, because if you're like, this one looks okay. I mean, this one's pretty decent here, and this one's a little worse, but this one here, I mean, it's like a completely different, it's that black box with the stars in the background, and then they, it looks like they just, you know, traced that part of it and stuck it on there and didn't even blend the, the blacks or the background or anything like that. Are you seeing this? Do you see what I'm talking about? So it looks super cheap, but is this the real one or maybe this is the fake one? And what about this one? Or maybe this one looks too good. What's going on there? Well, let's let's open up this guy first and just have a look. All right, so this is, um, sometimes it uses those flat tip screwdrivers. Um, all three of these are gonna use uh, the 3.8 millimeter game bit. Um, if you search for security bit, or if you just search for game bit, or even just search for NES screwdriver, you'll probably find it. Uh, because these things are good for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, um, Game Boy. Especially if you're out game hunting or going to conventions. Always make sure you got one of these on you. The vendor should also have one, but if they don't for whatever reason. I mean, if you're looking for that high price game... You want to make sure that you're getting the legit article. That's one of the things I love about this. The best way to, I mean, trust me, I got all my, all my repro gear and everything like that. The best way to spot a fake is to know how to make a fake. So here's what this one looks like. This one here, and I've showed this off in a video before. This is your ROM. I mean, this is your game. This is the circuit board right here. This is the only one of its type. It's an MH ROM. MH ROM. It's specific for this game. And it has the two chips here. This is your CHR. This is your characters. This is like your game's graphics. And this is your PRG. This is the program. This is your game's actual game, actually the actual gameplay of it all. It's pretty cool. And that's your CIC. That's the, the copyright, you know, not the copyright, but the uh, lockout protection chip. So neat. Couple resistors. Got a capacitor. This is legit. This is this is a, this is a real game. Um, it's a little dirty. I could clean it up. Don't need to right now. But you know, it works, and it, and it works. It works well. So out of these two, now this one again, this label looks almost too good. This label, a little bit, you know, see what I'm talking about there? All right, let's, ha let's have a look at this one. Ronnie. Ronnie, why you got to write on your cart there? Ronnie Eastridge, number 43. Good Lord, Ronnie. I got to see if I can find Ronnie. It's like, dude, I got your game. Have you looked at Nintendo games and there's a phone number on the back of the box or a phone number? They like, wrote their phone number on the car back of the cart as if they're going to lose it. I'm half tempted to call up some of those phone numbers sometime. <laughs> Just go around and... <laughs> start start calling around. Maybe their parents still live there. It's like, dude, I got your son's old uh, Nintendo game that you probably got him for Christmas. And he sold it for... We have... Ready for this? Dun-dun! That looks weird. Dun-dun! That looks weird. You know what, though? This is legit. It is a cost-saving measure. Let me get the other one just to compare it. Yeah, these two are they're they're both a legit article. Um, you know, I'm sure I I've heard there was a like a chip shortage in Japan maybe, and since they're pumping these out because it was the pack-in game, um, you know they could put these on the cheap. And there are other NES games that look like this. There are other NES games that have this. What's what's called a glob top. There is a chip under here, and then they just put this like this epoxy resin or something over it, so it won't st so it won't budge. You know, because they don't have the pins that pop through it. You just kind of put it on there, glob it on there, and it works. You don't have to worry about it. Very interesting. Um, there's, Like I said, there's a couple of other games out there. I forgot what they were at the top of my head. I think the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt World Class Track Meet, I think all of them are glob tops, as well as, like, a Super Spike V-Ball. There's, like, a Super Spike V-Ball combo set, and I think that's also a glob top. Pretty interesting to see those. But So if you're opening it up and you see this, it's real. It's legit. It's fun. So this one here... The only one we haven't looked at yet. Well, let's let's open it up and see what we see here. There's a final screw that's not coming out, but it's okay because it's not really in there. This one, I, 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 got, I got to be honest with you up front. 
It's not actually a game. It's a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> this is this was a courtesy of my friend uh, Josh. He's a Northwest guy. Helps out Double Jump Games all the time. Shout out to Double Jump Games in Vancouver, Washington. Yay. They're open, actually. Uh, I think are they open? I don't know. I shouldn't say they're open yet, but um, make sure you check them out when you can. I'm gonna try to open this up carefully. Um, did a great job with this, but you can with a little bit of ingenuity. Come on. And carefully. And carefully. You can you, you can take a Raspberry Pi and put it in something like this, so it'll work. Is it heavy? Uh, no, it's not heavy at all. In fact, it feels about the same. It doesn't feel as l it's a little bit heavier than a standard NES cart. Um, however, with something like this, um, it can fit right in here. You do have to kind of you can see what he did there to make it fit, you know, and everything like that. Oh, and that that screw did finally come out. Um, but I, I wanted to show this off just because I thought it was pretty cool. So, and it's like, you know, it was also the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt uh, cart. And this, hey, I've got to be honest with you, this thing does have Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt on it. <laughs> Has all the other NES games too, but <laughs> it does it does have it on here, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, but I just I just wanted to show that off really quickly. Here you go, Lily. Now, a lot of bootleg multi carts might even have something like this, especially the ones from like if it's a Famicom game and it has something like this. Yeah, well, I mean, who, who's to say? There's a ton of Famicom games that are like this too. If you're into old um, NES games and maybe you're just like, man, I, I played all the popular ones, but what are some other unique ones to check out? Right around this area, it's it's hard to see over here. And uh, I guess I can just say like, you know, make sure you're subscribed and click this uh, video right here and click this video right here, you know. Wherever it is, here it is. 